So yesterday evening, I received the email um, from a person. Um, and you know, I get many emails from different people, but this particular email caught my attention based off of the headline itself. Now I have received emails like this in the past, but it's been from you know, other people within our global community. But this one in particular was from a Chinese person. And I want to put this email up. So on this email, you see it was sent, um, 606 6 PM my time. And it says, Phil, I have noticed that you are talking a lot about the Chinese people moving to Africa and say, what you have to understand is that the Chinese are more advanced race than the Africans. If it's part of the evolutionary process that the stronger race dominates the weaker race, I understand that you are upset about it, but I hope you understand that it is a natural for the Chinese to rule over the Africans. I am sorry to say that us Chinese believe that the Africans are mentally inferior and that their resources must not be wasted. It is an the betterment of the Chinese people. And since the Africans don't have the mental capacity to utilize their rich resources, why can't the Chinese do it? And I hope that you won't comment about the dealings of the Chinese people in Africa in the future. Many thanks. She. Okay. So, you know, I, I received that email and it definitely goes in line to a lot of stories that I have been covering uh, over the years. Cause you know, a lot of times what happens, um, for us as, um, African people globally, whether you're a continental African or a diaspora African, we try to relegate the reality of the hatred that's directed toward us to trolling because we don't like to believe, um, the reality of our position and how other groups look at us even though we didn't do them anything, they can't point to, we enslaved anyone. We gentrified people. We, you know, did just horrible things to them. Nobody could point anything out that our group has done to them, but they have hated us without a cause. But to people who will say, well, Phil, this email could be trolling. One said that this could be a white supremacist. Say, let me tell you something. Not everyone, um, that send me something is a white supremacist first and foremost. Okay. There's other people that don't like us either. I've covered stories or I've had videos come to me that for instance, Kamala Harris's people, um, Indians in South Africa were fighting and trying to stab a brother out there in South Africa. Okay. That has nothing to do with, um, racist Mzungus, but let's do a recap. Can I'm doing this recap real quick, just on some screenshots of stories that we have covered on this platform, just to see if that's just a trolling email or is that some sentiments that Chinese have about Africans? So let's check this out. Okay. This one story we had posted where Kenyans, Nigerians, and Ugandans were banned from Chinese hotels in Guangzhou city. So in China, they were throwing them out. For, for no other reason for them being Africans. Now, if you think about that email that I received, it, it goes a long line to what that email was saying about the thought process of a lot of them. This is, you know, within businesses and the Chinese police in Guangzhou backed up the hotels about throwing out even diplomats on the streets. On this next story, this happened in Kenya where you had this, Chinese guy. Um, he ended up calling the president, president Kenyatta and Kenyans monkeys in that particular video. He also stated that they're there to make money and they don't like Kenyan people. He said that they stink. They're stupid. And he, he, this guy was saying all of this in while in Kenya. Okay. It goes along the line of what that email was saying, stating. On this particular video, you had a Chinese man. He was caning a Kenyan waiter for being later late to work at a hotel. Now it goes along lines to the email because they don't feel that Africans are equal to them. Do you see them doing this to white folks or anyone else? And they, they did this in Kenya. Okay. You look at this video right here. You had a Chinese making little children saying, you know, racial slurs about themselves in Mandarin. 
still goes along with that email, but you know, the email is trolling. This video we covered here about a pregnant woman could not get into a women's hospital because they were Africans. They were actually they were from Uganda, but don't matter about that. They're Africans. That woman would not let them in because of that reason. Okay. This here, Africans are thrown out on the streets by the police and other authorities because they blame them for bringing the coronavirus into China when we all know where the coronavirus comes from. It is not an African virus, but yet they throw out our brothers and sisters on the streets. Another video here that we have covered that Chinese mall workers had denied African women access to shop, but allowed the Mzungu women. And in this particular video, the Mzungu woman say, Hey, this is not right. Why are you not letting them shop? And the Chinese guy like, no, you could come in, but not them. Okay. Another video here, Chinese companies in Zambia was found uh, forcing workers to live at work or lose their job. And what they was doing during the coronavirus was saying that you can't go home to your families. You must stay here at the job. They didn't see their family for at least a eight to 10 weeks, but the Chinese supervisors, they can go home. This was happening in Zambia. Okay. Would you treat anyone this way that you viewed as your equal or would you treat people this way that you have racist views toward this other video, Zambia also, where you had a, um, official had to shut down the Chinese barbershop because they was refusing to cut Zambians hair, even though they are supposed to have a barbershop, this barbershop is only supposed to be for Chinese only. And in their laws there, you don't supposed to discriminate. So I'm showing you all this to say that the stories that we have covered have backed up that email. So you can relegate it to say it's trolling, but according to what we have reported here on this channel and in our other channel, African diaspora news insider, this is how some of them feel definitely about African people. We know how they feel here, even here in America. We have, how many stories have we covered of the nail shops, of the beauty uh, supply store videos, of how they have treated black American women. So it's not trolling, it's how they feel about us as African people, whether we are continental or diaspora. You have to understand people on the continent, many of you, have desire to come to America. Many of you have desire to go to the UK or different places in Europe because you say that we feel the leaders are corrupt. The leaders are actually few, but those of you are in the millions in your country. And in the old statement that says evil prevails when good people do nothing. This is why the leaders are allowed to get away with these things because unfortunately good people, aren't doing nothing. Our good people are trying to get a visa to the U S Our good people are trying to get visas to the UK or different places uh, in the EU. And it's not helping the country. And what's happening is your leaders are selling you out to the Chinese communist party. And these people have gotten so bold that they're willing to send emails to me, a diasporan African to not fight and advocate for you to stop speaking up about you because yes, I have been a loud voice about what they're doing on the continent. Now for me to stop talking about them, eh, that's not going to happen. Anybody that know me, now you stirred me up to talk more about you. You, you'd have done better not to even send me that email and tell me not to talk about you because I'm really going to talk about you. But what I want to say to my brothers and sisters on the continent is this, you know, my viewership have, you know, a lot of people from 18, definitely to 54, but my biggest, you know, viewership range is from the 25 to 34 range. I believe that the, the young people on the continent right now is the ones to change the continent. I understand you have the same problem with your leaders as we have here. The same issues that we have the, with the congressional black caucus and these black mayors and city council members selling us out or not doing nothing for us. It's the same issues that you have it on the continent. And we all have to remove these leaders out of the way because it's selling you out. Because understand something. If you don't do something about this now, my brothers and sisters on the continent, you will have a new colonizer and your new colonizer will be the Chinese communist party.
that's going to be your colonizer. I'm telling you right now, there's some things that you guys need to start doing quickly. Now, Julius Malema, shout out to Julius Malema. He is a great brother. He said that y'all need to get rid of that tribalism. And he was talking about the way um, that Nigerians are treated or Zimbabweans are treated, you know, the xenophobia. He's right on that. Listen, it don't matter where you come from. There's good people and there's bad people. There's evil and there's good. No matter where you come from. That tribalism has to stop. Who is it benefiting for you to say, I don't like him because he's Nigerian. I don't like them because they're from Sierra Leone. I don't like them because they're from Ethiopia. What, what is, how does that benefit anybody? Think about even the borders themselves. That was put up by the colonial powers. That was not put up by Africans. This was happened at the Berlin conference. You got, most of you know that by now, or a lot of you have learned this, um, as a recent about the Berlin conference and know, but those borders were put up by the, uh, your former colonizers. So Julius Malimba was saying, we don't need borders. We are all one people. And he had talked about, well, you look at China, they don't have a bunch of different presidents. They only have one. They have one government. You look at America. Yes, we got a lot of states, but we have one president, one government. You look at the UK, they have their, you know, monarchy and different things they have. All the different nations that's doing well for themselves have one president. So on the continent, you need to get rid of having 54 different presidents and come together as one and say, listen, we're going to have one president, one government, one military. We'll have 54 different states with governors. We'll have one president, one military, um, one government itself. This is what we're going to have here. And we're going to come all underneath the banner of the unified Africa. And it's going to, Africa is going to be a nation. You get what I'm saying? Doesn't mean you got to throw away your tradition, your languages, etc. This is how the world powers operate. You cannot become a superpower unless you do that. And the African continent must become a superpower. That is the only way that you could take your rightful place in the world. You would never rule at all. If you stay in the way you are right now divided, they benefit off of that. Another thing that you must do, you must have a policy in every African nation for the diaspora and Africans to come back home. You must have dual citizenship put on your books. You also, what I would suggest is have a program where you could, where diaspora and Africans could come in, apply for a five-year residency. And within that five-year residency, of course, you're going to, before a person becomes a resident, you know, of course, check out criminal history, check out, just check them out. Okay. And within that time period, let them be there for those five years with minimum being on the continent three months out of the year, at least minimum. Cause of course, within the process, you still got to go back and forth to America. And then if they can, you know, follow the laws, do what's right, et cetera, within those five years, then give diaspora and Africans the opportunity to become a citizen, because that is the key to the success of the continent. It's a lot of skills, education, and knowledge in the diaspora that's needed on the continent. And we all want to come and build a great Africa. This is what we want to see. This is how I look at it. When the Chinese are coming in, they're not coming in to build a great Africa. They're coming in as that guy has said, they're coming in to make money and they're coming in to build Africa for Chinese. They're not coming in to build Africa for you. Understand that. And the more and more you allow them to have a foothold, they are showing you this. This is why they're bold enough to even send me an email. I'm the wrong brother to send it to, but they're bold enough to send me an email to basically tell me to stop talking about them. I'm concerned. I'm trying to put out this warning for continental Africans to say, let's work together as one people globally. This is the purpose of my platform is to have us all come together globally as one people. Yes. Our stories are different. Yes. We were scattered in the four corners of the earth, but we can all come back to the continent and build Africa that we all want to see those who want to do it. Of course, tribalism is something that we need to get rid of even here in America. Cause yes, we're tribal here too. Oh, you're not my people. Oh, they're this, they're that. Listen, no, we can't be doing that. If someone comes in 
and they from a different country and they, they are joining with the white supremacists. Yes, we need to call them out and deal with them. But at the same time, we got people right here that, that has the same story that we all have here and they selling out to the white supremacists too. So what is the difference? It's selling out regardless. We need to come together as one because if we lose Africa, let me tell you that if we lose Africa, we have nothing. None of us have nothing. We lose Africa. Africa has the wealth of the world, the most resource rich continent on the planet. We can't lose that. I understand that. And I hope a lot of other people on the continent understand that as well. Cause these people don't mean you no earthly good. Now I understand geopolitics. You live in a global society. You're going to deal with a lot of people. Okay. And when I'm talking about this, I'm also talking about the thought process of the Chinese communist party. I'm not saying every Chinese person hate Africans or black Americans, etc. Not saying that because you can't speak in absolutes of nothing, but deal with Taiwan because I see that the Chinese communist party don't want you dealing with Taiwan. Don't mean, want you making trade. Don't want anything with Taiwan. So I would say deal with Taiwan as well. Don't just deal with them, deal with whoever you need to deal with, but you need to have people on the continent that know how to negotiate business deals and not just get excited about some money. You understand? This is why I personally feel that as diaspora and Africans, and as, as we become citizens, we need to get into politics as well. And I know some, but due to tribalism, some of you are like, Oh, I don't know about that because if they come over here, they're going to act like Liberia. Listen, let me tell you something. Those people f from that did the few things that they did in Liberia also was backed by the American government. Y'all don't tell that part of the story. Okay. And in the situation with Liberia, if you look at the positives of some of that, you know, Liberia was doing very well financially for a long time. Now, do I agree with the way they did the locals? No, but this is 2020. We can't just be talking about Liberia and, and what happened in that time period. That's over and done with. We're living in 2020 and on. You have a new colonizer trying to come colonize you now from the Chinese Communist Party. This guy is literally saying how they feel about Africans. We've shown you just examples and news stories we have covered. And you know, some people, you know, got upset because he was calling himself superior. Listen. I don't get involved with that kind of thought process or trying to go back and forth and say what they aren't. Listen, we all know, you know, the deal It's nothing to even be arguing. Like I said, I'm not going to argue with any group of people that have a policy called copy to China. In other words, their policy is to copy everything. And if you do the research, which I have, they have copied everything. Why do you think, that Trump is screaming about intellectual property because anything they you have, they will make a copy of it and sell it cheaper, which hurts uh, the markets. They're doing the same thing on the continent as well. They're taking their cheap goods, bringing it to the continent, selling it cheaper to people, and then the locals are losing out. So what I'm saying about all of this is, you know, you can't really call yourself superior when you were built by American capitalist greed because they didn't want to give us the jobs and they gave it to you guys, but you guys, at least I give you this much. You was smart enough to download all their blueprints and copy everything that made them successful to slap your name on it. And now you created a problem and you built yourself up off of American capitalist greed. Now they're kicking themselves in the butt, but you know, they, they would want to go to Africa and build that like that. They wouldn't want even us in America to learn all that manufacturing, but but that's what they get. And, um, you know, now they got to deal with you, but when it comes to the continent, take this seriously, you don't need them to build you an airport. And if you do ask somebody to help you build an airport, have a policy that says 50% of the work crew must be, um, locals must be Africans. So if you don't know it, you can learn it while you're on the job. You understand what I'm saying? If you reach out to, to people on that side, reach out, you can reach out to the Taiwanese or, or people like that. They have built airports over there. You can have the Taiwanese come over and work with them, learn those skills. If you don't have them, you can reach out to the diaspora and Africans and have us come in. We know about building roads and bridges. We know about building homes. We can do things as well. 
learn, like reach out. That's all you have to do is reach out and say, Hey, we need our, the plumbers in the diaspora. We need electricians. We need people that know how to run internet. We need people this. All you gotta do is open up, but you got to, got to, got to have your governments, uh, putting pressure on them and say, open this country up to the diaspora because it's a lot of red tape with some of this stuff. The people are saying return, but the governments aren't pushing. Now, shout out to sister Juliet in the Gambia. She is getting their whole constitution changed where they can have automatic citizenship for the diaspora. That's beautiful. That's just a saw issue and, and making it plain and fixing it. Okay. Then I want to wrap this up by saying this. I've seen some continental Africans in response to sister Art Kathy that's in the Gambia say that we're not racist. Um, like some of you black Americans could be, um, because that sister has been, you know, it's been some back and forth about that sister. And, um, you know, if you're not used to that kind of energy, uh, like that kind of sister could be, um, then you, it's a lot of Africans that's considered rude. That's considered abusive the way, uh, that sister talk. Now me personally, um, I talk a certain way. I wouldn't talk maybe the way that sister talk, but. I'm gonna tell you her heart's in the right place and you need people like that sister because me, I even need people like that sister to tell me some things, you know what I'm saying? Because you can't have everybody be nice to you. Sometimes you need a kick in the butt and every blue moon, I need a kick in the butt. So I would talk to a person like sister Art Kathy to get me straight, to tell me, Phil, you effing up right now. You know, not everything I'm going to respond to everybody like, Oh, it's okay. It's a no. Now, like I said, I don't agree with the way the sister do things, but everybody do things a little bit different than I would do things. I can't, I'm not her judge, jury, or executioner. I'm not, but you know, I would say this, I'm her brother, you know, whether she, if she, you know, know me or agree with me or not, that's still my sister regardless. Right. And you know, I see where her heart's at. I've seen some of the same problems and conditions on the content that she's talking about. But my attitude would be a lot different. Say, listen, well, let me be this solution. Let me be this change. But what I'm saying is in response to some continental Africans saying, well, we're not racist like that. Um, the Chinese, when they come in, they're not thinking about you like building the place up and building Africa for Africans. They're coming in thinking Chinese first, R their race is first. There would be call themselves C one. In other words, Chinese first. That's what they, that's how they coming in. Okay. So you all is saying you're not racist and this and that nobody cares at the end of the day, they're coming in to make money and take over your spot because they coming in on a Chinese first mindset. They're not coming to build no utopia with you because when you in their country, look at the way they treat you. We have shown that many times before. But I just want to give a warning out to my brothers and sisters on the continent all over that watch uh, our platform. Let's work together um, to build an Africa that we want to see. We don't need to see another colonizer comes in. I'm going to do my part to, to speak against it. Um, anybody that comes in like Juan Gill or you know, have African tigers comes in. She's definitely owned by the Chinese. That's for sure. Cause she see the issue in Kenya with them, right? We will speak up about what they're doing. But at the same time, let's work together as a people to build Africa for Africans, whether you're continental or diaspora and Africans, we can do that. We have, but we got to come together because these people that's coming in, they're not your friend. Yeah. They may build you an SGR train. Yes. They may build you an airport, a uh, Bole international airport over there in Ethiopia. They may build it for you, but really who they building it for? Cause they don't like you like that. They are building it to take over. And will you let them? Because you can't have another colonizer coming into your continent.